This is Professor King. This is the second video to show you guys some techniques for Project 6 rendering coins. Uh, the second technique I'm going to show you guys is type on a path. Um, Illustrator has tools to create type along a pathway, along any drawn shape. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate with a sort of zigzag line here. Um, you can see that my zigzag line uh, had a gray fill, even though it's an open shape, it made it into three triangles because it's trying to create fills across an open line. I'm going to change that. I'm going to make it a, uh, a green line. Um, and I'm going to use the type on a path tool. So if you hold down the type tool, the capital T, you get a few options here. Type on a path tool is the one that we are interested in. So if you click an object with the type on a path tool, it turns it into a type path. So now the stroke, the green stroke that I had on that path has gone away, and I am simply typing on the path. Um, you can use all of your alignment tools, your sizing tools, your spacing tools, all of the options that you have to style type you have here uh, with type on a path. Now, I want to start you guys off with the caveat that Type on a path is something that's very easy to do poorly and very hard to do well. You see it all the time, and most of the time you see it, it's not done very well. Um, it sort of looks awkward and it's difficult to read. Um, and really, I think the key is finesse. You just need to finesse the spacing quite a bit. Um, another key would probably be don't put it on a zigzag like this. This looks really awful because uh, because of the zigzag itself. So I'm going to delete this guy and show you how to do it on a circle. So I've drawn a circle here, uh, a 30% gray circle that's going to be the background of my coin. I'm going to draw another circle that I'm going to put some type on. I want to make this smaller because I want my type to be contained within, within my coin. Um, I'm going to make this circle bright magenta just so it really stands out in the video. Um, and I'm going to go again to my type on a path tool. I'm going to click on the 12, 12 o'clock point of the circle. And you'll notice that I suddenly get a flashing cursor, and the fill of the circle has gone away. That's because it's no longer an object with its own fill. It is the path for the type. Um, so what should I say? Let's say type on a path. It's too big. The last word has disappeared because it's too big for my uh, for my shape. I'm going to reduce the tracking, which is the overall spacing between letters, and I'm going to reduce the actual type size. Now I have something that's much more reasonable for this circle. Um, so again, I started my cursor at. 12 o'clock on this circle. Um, if I select the circle, I can now control the alignment. So that is center alignment, right alignment. I'm going to do center alignment, but I don't want it to be... Now it's going from roughly 2 o'clock to roughly 10 o'clock. I want it... 
the opposite. I want it arching over the top, sort of like an archway or a rainbow or something. Uh, so I'm going to go to my direct selection tool. I'm going to hide the guidelines for a moment. And you can see that with the direct selection tool, I can directly select where my cursor is. So this, this is the starting point of my type. Um, I want to make it arch over the top of the coin. I would move that starting point with it center aligned to roughly 12 o'clock if this were a clock face. Um, so the type is now doing what I want it to do, but it doesn't look that great. Any of you who have taken typography classes know that the space between letters is just as important as the letters themselves. Um, So it's a good idea, especially with type on a path, to go in and adjust the spacing between the letters. Um, you can adjust the overall tracking. Tracking would be the spacing for the entire bunch of text to take it farther apart in the positive numbers or much closer together in the negative numbers. Um, now you may be noticing something funny is happening is that um, if the type is on the circular baseline then the spaces between the bottoms of the letters look okay they look pretty much right but between the tops of the letters is much different and that is a function of the circle so I find it very useful when doing type on a circular path or a curved path to work with the baseline shift. That is this function down here. Um, if you don't see that in your character palette, you want to go into this upper right hand corner and show the options. It's this whole second set of options. Um, baseline shift moves the letters. A positive number will move the baseline that the bottoms of the letters all rest on. It'll move them up. A negative number will move them down. So zero, the bottoms of the letters are resting right on the baseline. If you bring it down a little bit um, so that it is more or less in the center of the letters, you're going to get better control over the spacing for type on a circular path. Uh, because it's not trying to space the bottoms of the letters or the tops of the letters, it's trying to space the centers. Um, so you may find once you have shifted the baseline down a little bit that your letters now seem way too close together um, and you can do an overall uh, tracking move. You may also find that particular letters look too far apart or too close together. Um, this Y is an example. And for there, you can go in and uh, use the cursor, put it between the letters, and adjust the spacing between those particular letters as needed to bring them closer together. So remember again, the difference between good type on a path and ugly type on a path is it's all, it's all in finesse. It's all in the details. It's all in the fine tuning. Um, One more thing I want to show you while I'm messing around here on the type palette are these two controls, vertical scale and horizontal scale. Um, what do these do? These adjust the proportions of a letter independently. Um, so if I made this 50% horizontal scale, it makes it compressed. Now, you should never ever use these features. Um, this is using math to ruin what a type designer poured their heart into creating. Um, it can basically simply ruin a typeface. Uh, it can ruin its appearance. Now you 
may notice here that this typeface, Nexa, is that the horizontal and vertical are basically all the strokes are the same width. Well, in the word on, where I have horizontally compressed it, you'll notice the top and bottom of the O appear much thicker, and that's because it has just squished it without any regard to the design. So um, never ever do that. It's a type crime. It's there. They make it very easy, um, but uh, you need to stay away. Just, just don't do it ever. So, oh, much better. Back to, back to how it belongs. Um, now, I want to show you um, on a second coin. What if you want? What if you want uh, an arc of type along the top and an arc of type along the bottom? So you want this to say, for example, you want it to say United States of America arcing along the top this way, and you want to have your issue year 2013 arcing this way. Well, the problem is, on a path, it can be one way or the other. It, you can't have it both ways um, on the same path. So let's say I try to do it here. Well, it's not really working. It's not. It doesn't really work the way I want it to work. Uh, yeah, I want type on a path that way, but I don't want my 2013 upside down. Well, what if I go in here and move that? Well, then it's on the inside, and that doesn't really work. All right, let's undo, 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 <clears throat> and I'm going to show you how to make this work. I'm going to duplicate all of this, bring it over here to our C coin, and show you how to get type on a path up top and type on a path down below. The secret is two paths. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to have the words type above arcing across the top of my coin C and the words type below arcing across the bottom. And the way to do this is, now I, I showed you this, that you can, with the white arrow selection tool, you can move your beginning point around. All right. You can also bring it inside and outside. If you bring it inside the circle, it handles it much differently. Um, that's not what we want here, but that's going to help us with the type on the bottom. So what you simply do is create a new circle. Um, I'm going to go to outline mode, bring back my guidelines so I know where the center is. and draw a new circle here. It's going to be the exact same size, it's going to be in the same place, which makes it a little bit difficult for us to know what it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it down, just just down. Um, I held down shift in the arrow key, so I moved it down 10 points. Um, I'm going to use the type on a path tool select that, oh, I think I was using the wrong tool, type on a path tool, select that path, and type below. Now it isn't behaving like I want it to just yet. With the white arrow I bring it inside,
But what I will do is I will first move it further down. I thought the 10 points was enough to keep myself from getting confused, but you can probably see this is super confusing. Okay, now I've brought it further down so that I can see exactly where I want it to be. <clears throat> White arrow tool, move that so it's on the inside. And apparently I have a parade coming down my street. So if you hear marching band music, that's why. So now my type below is on the inside of the path. You'll notice the spacing looks much, much different, much more spread out. That's a function of it being inside the path instead of outside. I want to go to my tracking overall, bring that way down. In fact, I might bring it into the negative numbers to make it even tighter. And I'm going to need to go a little bit smaller because I want it to be on the bottom of the arc. Um, and I will concurrently go to the top one, bring that down because the effect I'm going for is that the two are the same. They're just on two sides of the same arc. So let's look at this in outline mode really quickly. I have this circle, which is my type above. I have this circle, which is my type below. I bring back my guidelines. I'm going to bring this guy back so that they're sitting on the same, same, in the same place. Um, maybe I still need to make my type a little bit smaller in both cases so that they look good. So now I have type above and type below. The secret is to use two paths. Ta-da. Um, the next video is going to show you guys a few a few techniques specifically towards making your coins look more like coins. So stay tuned.